The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Homeowners, does this sound interesting to you? A mortgage that may save money for you and also furnishes you with life insurance security. Be sure to listen closely to the middle commercial. It's a special message to homeowners from our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society, telling you about the Equitable Society's assured home ownership plan. It's America's finest plan for home ownership. Tonight's FBI file, The Careless Killer. The enormity of the crime wave now engulfing the United States cannot be fully realized unless you know some of the figures. Figures which are the result of crime surveys made by your FBI. The number of people arrested and fingerprinted in this country in the past year is almost 25% higher than the number arrested 10 years ago in 1937. The number of crimes committed in the past year total more than a million six hundred thousand. During the average day, 36 people were slain. Every 24 hours, an average of almost 400 people were feloniously assaulted or robbed. In addition, there were more than 4,000 other larcenies of various types being committed every day. Those are the shocking proportions of the current crime wave. The crime wave about which something must be done immediately before it's too late. Tonight's FBI file opens in an apartment in a large Midwestern city. The occupants of this flat are a young married couple named Rockford. Mrs. Rockford is at the front door just admitting a visitor. Hello, Mom. Hiya, Peg. Well, come on in. Okay. Well, gee, you'll have to excuse how the house looks, Mom. I, I didn't expect nobody so early. This ain't the first sloppy joint I've seen. Where's that husband of yours? Charlie? Well, how many husbands have you got? Just Charlie. Uh, he, he's in bed. Get him up. Oh, well, he's still sleeping, I Mom. said get him up. I want to talk to him. Oh, sure, sure, okay. He uh, may not like this. That really worries me. Charlie? Huh? Charlie? Huh? What? Charlie, will you wake up? Oh, what is it? My mother's here. Uh, so what? She wants to see you. Oh, look, tell her to come back later, huh? I don't feel Who cares like... what you feel like? Huh? Wake up, you bum. Oh, oh, good morning, Mrs. Wilton. It ain't morning, it's afternoon. Uh, Charlie didn't get to bed till awful late, Mom. Yeah, I... don't I... care about that. Are you awake enough to listen to something? Sure, sure. It's about that counterfeit stock plate you bought. Yeah? I advanced you the dough for it. I know you did. 4,000 bucks I gave you. That's right. It ain't worth 10 cents. What? Mom, what do you mean? Your little genius here has done it again. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. The guy guaranteed it. Oh, no, he did, huh? Yeah, he said all I had to do was put ink on the plate, then paper, then I had stock. But you saw the certificates. I gave them to you. And I tried to cash them. What happened? The company he picked went out of business ten years ago. Oh. Mom, how was Charlie to know that? Shut up. When I think of all the smart thieves you could have married, and I get a son-in-law like that. Oh, no, now look, Mother. Never mind that mother routine. Who was the guy you bought that plate from? A man named Carson. All right. Get dressed and get over and see him. What for? Get me my money back. Oh, but I can't do that. Why not? The deal's all closed. You can open it up again. You got a gun, ain't you? 
Sure. Take it along with you. Let them see you mean business. Oh, I know. Get but... over there. If you don't come back here with the money, you can use the gun on yourself. <laughs> In the same city, in the nearby FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is just reporting to his agent in charge. You sent for me, Mr. Stilling? Oh, yes, Jim. Just got a report from our Chicago office. Huh? Wants to get right to work on it. What's it all about, sir? National Stolen Property Act. Huh? They picked up a suspect yesterday who was trying to pass over $5,000 worth of counterfeit stock certificates. I see. And the agents who searched his effects found that he also had counterfeit stock plates in his possession. Well, <laughs> Did his own printing job, huh? That's right. Well, this man was questioned for a number of hours, and he finally broke down and revealed where he got the plates. And where was that? Right here in town. Well. He claimed he got them from a man named Carson. Here's his address, Jim. All right, sir. According to the suspect's testimony, this Carson makes a business of turning out counterfeit stock plates. I see. Get right over there and check on Carson. Okay. See what you can find out. story opens, we find Betty Jane, girl of the hills, sitting in the palatial drawing room of her husband Roger's mansion. That's enough of that. Ah, oh, Mom, what'd you turn it off for? Are you kidding? But I wanted to hear it. It's such a sweet, sad story. It's all about a girl who's looking for a missing husband. I'd rather and... hear about your missing husband. What's keeping that guy? Well, he's only been gone an hour. It's almost two hours. Mom, you don't like Charlie very well, do you? You can say that again. Well, what have you got against him? Mostly the fact that he breathes in and out. You know, it hurts him real bad when you talk to him real mean like you do. Ain't that a shame. He, he says he thinks of you like you're his real mother. That's just how he treats me. Do you realize how much dough I've shelled out for that grifter? Well, it was all on business deals. Some business deals. First, I set him up in that bookmaking joint. He blows that one. I make him a fence. He kicks that around. Oh, those were bad breaks. This one was the topper. A six-year-old kid. A backward six-year-old. Couldn't miss making dough these days. But no, oh, he... Oh, I'll, I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hello, Charlie. Yeah? Huh? You what? What's the matter? Oh, Charlie, that's terrible. What is it? Uh, hold on a minute. What's wrong? Charlie went to see that Mr. Carson. Yeah, did he get the dough? No. Why not? They had a fight. Charlie killed him. That's great. He wants to know what he should do. Wait a minute. Tell him to get out of town. Hello, Charlie. I just told Mom. She said you should get out of town. Huh? Wait a minute. He says he hasn't any dough. Tell him to dig it someplace. He ain't getting it from me. Oh, but, Mom... Let me talk to that guy. All right, here. Hello? Yeah, this is Mother. I want you to listen to me, stupid, and listen close. You get out of town right now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You ain't seeing Peg because she's coming with me. Look, get this straight. If you come near my club, you won't have to worry about the cops. I'll take care of you myself. Mr. Sterling? Yes, Jim. May we come in? Come ahead. This is Detective Harvey, Homicide Squad. Mr. Sterling. Hello, sir. Hello, Harvey. Did you go to Carson's office? Yes, sir. That's why I brought Harvey back here with me. What do you mean? Carson was shot and killed this afternoon. Well, when was this? About ten minutes before I arrived. What about the killer? We don't know who he is yet, sir. Let's have the whole story, Jim. All right, sir. Well, as I told you, as soon as I arrived at Carson's office, I found his body. Was uh, anyone else there? Yes, a young lady, his secretary. Hmm. Could she shed any light on the killing? Well, she didn't know the name of the man who did it, but she said he had been in Carson's office before. Oh? I got a complete description of him from the girl, sir. Right down to a ring that he was wearing. Good. I also learned why this man was there. Yes? The secretary admitted that he'd bought some counterfeit stock plates from Carson in the past. On this visit, he had an argument with him, claiming these plates were worthless. And that evidently led to the shooting. Mm hmm Where is the secretary? We're holding her now as a material witness. You can question her at any time. Good. Well, Mr. Sterling, we have an interest in finding this killer, too. How's that? 
The secretary stated that he walked out of there with another set of counterfeit stock plates. Well, I'd suggest you work right along with the police on this. All right, sir. You can come down to headquarters with me now, Jim. We can see if the secretary's identified anyone, okay? Is uh, she looking over pictures? Yes, sir. Then get going. Oh, Jim. Oh, uh, yeah, Bob. I've just talked to Carson's secretary. Any luck? Yes, yeah, she's identified the murderer. Good. Who is it? A small-time thief named Charlie Rockford. Charlie Rockford. Mm, I see. Our lieutenant seems to have a pretty good line on him. Oh? Knows where he lives, where he hangs out. Hey, that's fine. They've sent out a general alarm on him. They also have a squad car on the way over to his home. Good. Oh, Bob, I'd like to talk to that secretary now. See if I can get a complete line on Carson's operation. <laughs> Table four on the house. Mom, Mom. What is it, Peg? Charlie's here. What? He just came in. He's waiting out by the check room. What for? Well, he says he's got to see you. That chump. I told him not to come here. He says to tell you that a mother shouldn't desert a son in his hour of peril. Well, that guy quit saying he's my son. Well, Mom, you know that Never he... mind, never mind. He can't be standing out there like a signpost. Bring him back to my office. Sure, okay. I'll be right there. <laughs> Charlie. Uh, what'd she say, Peg? She wants you to come back to her office. Oh, swell. Let's go. She's sort of mad at you, Charlie. Oh, look, honey, I'll con her out of that. She says you shouldn't have come here. Now, what sort of way is that to act to her own flesh and blood? She says you ain't her flesh and blood, Charlie. Listen, I'm getting sick of what she says. Now, don't go acting that way. Here we are. Go ahead. Okay. Hiya, Mother. I thought I told you to keep away from here. I'm in trouble. Lash. Look, I'm hot, I tell you. So I see by the newspapers. Huh? The papers have got something about me? Only a story and a picture. Oh, so that's why them cops showed up. What do you mean, Charlie? Showed up where? At the apartment. You went back to your apartment? Yeah. Why? Well, I thought maybe Peg would be there. Why, you stupid... What happened with the cops? Well, I happened to spot the squad car pulling up in front of the building, so I slammed down a fire escape. And then you came right over here? Yeah. That's great. Drag me into this thing. How? They wouldn't be tailing you or nothing. Oh, I gave them the slip. Some slip you could give them. Blind Tom could follow you. You shouldn't have done that, Charlie. Oh, look, lay off of me, will you? Both of you. I need some dough, getaway money. And that's what you came here for? Yeah. Not a chance. Oh, now, wait a minute. You're in this thing, too, you know. How do you figure that? Well, you put up the dough for that phony stock plate. You were the one who told me to use a gun to get the dough back. Charlie, that isn't fair. Let him talk. I want to hear more. Sure, I'll talk. I'll tell you this right now. Unless you kick in with a bundle for me to go away with, I blow a whistle on you. <gasps> I oh. bet you would, too. Sure. So how about it? Are you getting it up? The answer's still no. Okay. Maybe this will change your mind. Charlie! I was wondering when you'd pull that gun. How about some dough? Charlie, put down that gun. She's my mother. Never mind the song titles. Come on, money. Your desk is loaded with cash, I know that. Well, I was always taught to pay a good deal of respect to a guy with a pistol. Mom, don't you give him anything. Keep out of this. Looks like I gotta give him something, honey. Think this would be enough? <laughs> Is he dead? What do you think? Mom, you shouldn't have done that. Tonight's case from the official FBI files will be reopened in just a moment. Home, sweet home. I forget the words now, but it's always hard for a man to express his real feeling, the warmth, the love of his own home. As a homeowner myself, I know what you mean. And for that reason, I also know you'll be interested in the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. It's a money saver. It's a home saver. It's America's finest plan for home ownership. Assured home ownership? 
Well, what is this plan, and why is it the finest? The Assured Home Ownership Plan has these four main advantages. First, if the owner dies, the Equitable Society cancels the mortgage. It's paid off in full. What's more, every dollar previously paid on principal is returned to the widow along with the canceled mortgage. Second, during the owner's lifetime, a special cash fund is built up in this plan, ready for use if sickness or unemployment threaten home security. Third, mortgage interest is only 4%, and there is a liberal allowance to help cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. Fourth, as your mortgage shrinks, the cash fund increases. You can use it to pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in approximately 14 years. What if I don't use this cash fund? Who gets it when the mortgage is paid off? You do. It's all yours. That's why I call this plan a money saver. After the mortgage is paid, this cash fund equals about half the original loan. All in all, a man is mighty lucky if his health, age, income, and the location of his home qualify him for an equitable, assured home ownership plan. Who can tell me if I qualify, Mr. Keating? Ask your Equitable Society representative. Get full information on the plan that protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. Look in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now back to our FBI file, The Careless Killer. The cold-blooded murder in tonight's case in the files of your FBI would be shocking if it happened in the lives of ordinary people. But it ceases to be surprising when it occurs in the lives of a criminal family. It seems like a stunning climax only because it violates every basic precept of family life. Love, loyalty, devotion, and protection. But those characteristics are connected with the lives of those who live by the law, who regard their fellow human beings with compassion and understanding. Love, loyalty, devotion, and protection are not in the criminal vocabulary because they would stand in his way when he was stealing or murdering. To the criminal, nothing must be allowed to shackle his desires. In his own mind, the world was built to provide him with a living, an effortless living. And in quest of that kind of a life, the criminal will stop at nothing. The night's file continues at the FBI field office. Special Agent Jim Taylor is seated at his desk as Detective Harvey enters. I didn't think you'd still be here, Jim. Hello, Bob. Doing a little night work. These are Carson's books and papers. Oh, I see. Uh, Anything on that man Rockford? No, he appears to have given us the slip. For a while, at least. Did the police go to his apartment? Yes. What happened? Well, I'm kind of ashamed to tell you this. Uh, What? They neglected to surround the place, and he made a getaway out of one of the windows. That's too bad. I'll hope he's picked up soon. I want to talk to him. About Carson's operation? Mm Mm-hmm. He could be a valuable source of information on how he operated. Oh, excuse me. Sure. Special Agent Taylor. Oh, yes. Yes, he is. Just a minute, please. Bob, it's for you. Oh, here. Thanks. Hello? Yes, Lieutenant. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. I see. I'll get on it right away. Right, sir. I was lead on Rockford, Jim. Oh, has he been located? No, but they learned that his mother-in-law owns a nightclub right downtown here. A place called the Club Adrian. Oh, yeah, I've heard of it. How about coming over there with me? Good idea. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Peg, will you cut that out? I feel just like Betty Jane. Who's she? Betty Jane, Girl of the Hills, that radio program. Oh, that. You should suffer so long. She, too, has no husband. Look, save those crocodile tears. You miss him just about as much as I miss Hitler. But he died so bravely. Yeah, just as he was about to shoot your mother. Now cut it out. Mom. Yeah. What are you going to do with him? Get rid of him, of course. Where is he now? In a closet in the back hall. Will anyone find his body? Eventually. 
Look, go on outside in the club and get a drink or something, will you? Yeah, but there's a couple of things I want to ask you. What? Well, first of all, should I start wearing black? Oh, that'd be great. The guy's body may not turn up for months. But I look good in black. Look, please go outside, honey. How are you going to get rid of him? I told one of the boys to pick up a truck of some kind. Steal it? Yeah, he'll come around to the back of the club and we'll load the body in after we close. Oh. Now, will you go outside? There's a lot of guys in the joint looking for young girls to dance with. Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> Quite a dive, huh, Jim? <laughs> it's hard for me to tell. I can't see very well through this haze of smoke. I wonder if the owner will join us. Mrs. Wilton? Yes. Oh, did you tell the captain we'd like to see her? Yes, but that I doesn't... I beg your pardon, boys. Did you want to see me? Are you Mrs. Wilton? That's right. How do you do? My name is Taylor. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Oh. This is Detective Harvey of the local police. Hello. Hello. Well... You boys just about cover everything, huh? <laughs> just about. <laughs> Glad to see you. Thanks. Uh, won't you join us for a moment? What's on your mind? We'd like to talk to you, if we may. Oh, sure. Here, sit right here. Thanks. Will you have a drink? Oh, thanks. I just sell the stuff. Well, go ahead. It's about your son-in-law, Mrs. Wilton. I figured that was it. He killed a man today. Yeah, I read it in the papers. And so far, your son-in-law has managed to elude the police. I was wondering if uh, you had seen anything of him. No. Hmm. And frankly, I don't want to. And how about your daughter? Has she heard anything of him? No. And how do you know? She's been with me all day and tonight. Is she at the club here now? We'd like to talk to her, too. Well, she ain't around at the moment. If you was to come back later or wait oh, here a while... Oh, there you are. I've been looking all over for you, Mom. Is this your daughter? Yeah. I've just been dancing with that cute little guy. He works for an advertising uh, agency. Excuse and... me, Mrs. Rockford. Yeah. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Huh? I've come here to find out about your husband. I already told you, we ain't seen him. Oh, oh no, we ain't seen him, all right. N not at all. Go finish your dance, honey. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, goodbye. Nice to have met you. <laughs> you see, she don't know any more about him than I do. Yes, I gathered that. How about a drink for you boys? Uh, uh, no, thanks. We've got to be going. Well, if the guy turns up, you can believe me, I'll get right in touch with you. I ain't looking for the kind of trouble he carries. Well, Jim? Pretty phony routine she gave us. Yeah. I think they've heard from Rockford, all right. In fact, I know they have. How's that? You remember that ring that Carson's secretary said that Rockford was wearing? Yes. Black onyx with three diamond chips. Mm hmm well, his wife was wearing it tonight. Oh. Of course, it could be a duplicate, but I doubt it. Well, that means that he's been back here at the club. I think so. It could also... Look out, Bob! Hey. Thanks, Jim. It's okay. Oh, that would have been a nice finish. Knocked off by a truck from a diaper service. <laughs> yeah. He certainly was... Hey. Wait a minute, Bob. What? That alley the truck just went down. I'd like to see where it leads to. Okay. Seems to go around back of the club. Mm -hmm. What would a diaper truck be doing back there? Yeah. Bob, if Rockford is still in the club, they could be using that truck to get him out. That's logical. No one would ever suspect he was getting away in that. Bob. Yes, Jim? Let's find a patrolman. Have him cover the front door of this club. Okay. I'll cover this alley and keep an eye on the truck. Right. You get down and pick up a warrant for us to search this place at once. <laughs> Peg, open up the door of that truck. Very well. Well, hurry up about it. This guy's heavy. Yes, Mom. Oh, well, you cut out that sniveling. This is his funeral, Mom. And I ain't even wearing black. Yeah, I know. Girl of the hills. Oh. Where's the truck driver? Inside, grabbing a drink. Now, we got it. Quiet. What's that? Good evening, Mrs. Wilton. Who is it? Special Agent Taylor. The FBI. Oh, hello there. I thought I heard some kind of activity going on back here. Yeah, just taking in some laundry. Oh. And is your laundry usually delivered in a diaper truck? Yeah. Okay, Peg, you can tell the driver to come out. Oh, uh, just a minute. Huh? 
I'm curious to know what it is you were putting in the truck, Mrs. Wood. What do you mean? You just carried something in there, didn't you? No. You mind if I take a look in there anyway? No, no, don't. Shut up. What's wrong, miss? Keep away from that truck. Why? I've got a gun here. That's reason enough. That wouldn't be Rockford's body in there, would it? Real smart, ain't you? No, just observant. Well, that observant stuff ain't going to do you any good. Mom, take it easy. We might just as well add another body to the collection. Give me that gun. Not a chance, mister. Yeah, who's huh? Give me that gun. No, let go of me. Sorry, Mrs. Wood. Yeah. I have a search warrant. Ah, oh, Bob, you'd better change it to an arrest warrant for murder. Mrs. Wilton was convicted in the state court of first-degree murder and sentenced to be executed. Her daughter was convicted for her part in the murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. <laughs> Too much credit for the closing of tonight's case in the files of your FBI cannot go to the local police department whose cooperation has extended to the fullest extent. And it is true that in many cases throughout the year, your FBI would find their investigations much more difficult without the help of local law enforcement agencies. For that reason, the Federal Bureau of Investigation urges you to do your part as a citizen in seeing to it that your community has the strongest possible local police force. And by doing that, you'll be doing your part in fighting the crime wave. just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Uh, Mr. Keating, about that assured home ownership plan. My next move is to see my equitable society representative and find out if I can qualify. Is that right? Right you are, Ed. And he'll tell you more about what you get in one package from the equitable society. A mortgage that's paid in full if the owner dies. If not, a cash fund to be used in financial emergencies and mortgage interest at only 4%. No wonder it's called America's finest plan for home ownership. So don't delay. See your equitable representative soon. Or write to the Equitable Society, care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Unhappy Hijacker. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The unhappy hijacker on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.